The Newport Folk Festival had, by its sixth year, become a place where fans could hear obscure rural musicians while checking out young, up-and-coming folk artists. Playing at Newport put a musician in the national spotlight and introduced him to the makers and shakers in the industry. Albert Grossman already had Bob Dylan, Peter Paul and Mary, and the Jim Queskin Jug Band on the festival's roster. He very much wanted the Butterfield Band to appear at Newport as well. With help from Peter Yarrow and the management at Electra, Grossman convinced the festival's board to include the band, despite the fact that Butterfield and crew played electric instruments. Record crowds turned up for the festival's three days and four nights of performances. With the crowds came an expansion of the definition of folk music. Pete Seeger, Newport's patriarch and guiding spirit, represented the older, more traditional understanding of folk music as something created by a single performer playing an acoustic instrument. But there were younger performers at Newport in 1965 who saw things differently. Mike Bloomfield arrived at Newport knowing none of the festival's politics. He was there to play with Paul and to hear others play. On Friday morning, he was asked to host a blues workshop, and he took great pleasure in introducing his friend, Lightning Hopkins. Of all the, the blues singers that I know, I've got one favorite. Uh, to me, it most typifies the, what I feel is the blues, and that, this is Lightning Hopkins. The Butterfield Band made its Newport debut later that afternoon at a workshop to the right of the main stage. They followed the acoustic blues duo of Spider John Kerner and Tony Glover, and their short set was unlike anything many at Newport had ever heard. A huge crowd had gathered to hear the electric group from Chicago, and they were amazed and delighted by the band's big, tough sound and infectious rhythms. Michael Bloomfield was more animated than usual, especially when he soloed. The band's 15 minutes made a deep impression. One performer in particular took note of the Butterfield Band's impact at Newport. Bob Dylan had arrived at the festival unsure of what he would do for his Sunday night performance. But now he had an idea. At his Saturday afternoon workshop performance, Dylan played to a huge, adoring crowd. He sang several tunes from his recent records, accompanying himself on guitar and harmonica. It was the Dylan everybody knew. But at Newport that weekend was the guitarist who had helped create Dylan's latest recording. Why not recreate the folk rock sound on stage at the festival? Dylan decided he would do just that. Michael was recruited to organize an electric band to back Dylan up. Organist Al Cooper, who had played on Like a Rolling Stone in the studio, readily agreed to perform, as did Michael's friend Barry Goldberg. Jerome Arnold and Sam Lay of the Butterfield Band rounded out the rhythm section. Secret rehearsals were held at festival producer George Wine's Newport Mansion on Saturday night. Paul Butterfield. <laughs> The Paul Butterfield Blues Band opened the evening concert on Sunday, the final day of the festival. The short set was hastily arranged after they were rained out of the afternoon New Folk show. The high point of the evening concert came toward the end of the first half. The person that's going to come up now has a limited amount of time. His name is Bob Dylan. <coughs> and the singer launched into Maggie's Farm, backed by Bloomfield and the band. The sound was raw and unrestrained, largely due to Bloomfield's aggressive soloing. The audience was stunned. The performers watching from the wings were stunned. The senior members of the festival's board were outraged. Dylan charged on. So I was the production manager at the Newport Fe Folk Festival in 1965. And by the time I got there, that summer you could just hear, you turned into the radio, in the car radios, you're driving around Newport, you could hear what was going to happen. 
you know, this was big. This was tech, huge cultural tectonic plates shifting. And then, like a Rolling Stone, here's Dylan with the drum kit and Al Cooper playing that amazing figure on the organ. And you're listening to this and going, whoa, you know, this is huge. You know, folk music was a little tiny thing off to one side, and now it's front and center in American culture. And um, so the anticipation that weekend was incredible. Once upon a time, you dressed so fine Through the bumps of time in your prime then you Some loved the new Dylan, but many in the audience couldn't hear the singer's lyrics over the roar of the band. They began booing their folk hero. Dylan played the three songs he'd prepared with Bloomfield and hastily left the stage. It took pleading from MC Peter Yarrow to bring him back for two additional tunes with his acoustic guitar. He finished the set with a prophetic, It's all over now, baby blue. And it's all over now, baby blue. Michael Bloomfield heard nothing but cheers as they left the stage. To him, the performance had been a triumph. When he learned that the response had been mixed at best, he was astonished. The revolutionary thing that Dylan had done with Michael's help had largely eluded him. To Bloomfield, it was all just music. He and Bob hung out at the after-festival party, and it would be the last time they'd play together in public for 15 years. After Newport, Albert Grossman approached Bloomfield with a question. Would he like to go on tour with Dylan as part of the folk singer's new electric band? Or would he rather become the Butterfield Blues Band's lead guitarist? Grossman managed both of them. I'd figure he would say, well, I think he'll be most effective here, or most effective there. Michael wanted more than anything to play. He could see that with Dylan, his soloing would take a back seat to the singer's melodies and lyrics. But with Paul Butterfield, there seemed to be no limit to what he could do. I could even see then that Bob was like, uh, it was sort of real thrilling, but I just thought I wouldn't get a chance to play enough music, licks. Mm -hmm. I actually seriously moved my fingers enough. Michael decided he would play the blues. <laughs> 